In this video, we're going to evaluate expressions that contain fractional exponents that have a numerator other than 1. So something that looks like maybe 625 to the power of 3 fourths. Noting here that our numerator is something that is something other than a 1. So if you look on the screen, what you're going to notice is that the numerator in each of our fractional exponents is no longer 1 it's now equal to something else. We're going to explore what we can do in order to help us solve different expressions that contain a fractional exponent when the numerator isn't 1. Now what I always like to start doing is I like to rewrite these very, very strategically. And what I want to remind you of is the powers to powers rule. So you already know that if you have something like 10 to the power of 4 to the power of 3, you can multiply your two exponents together, and that will become 10 to the power of 12. Those are, in essence, the exact same thing. So what we're going to do here is we're going to rewrite this very strategically. And hopefully you already know that 2 times 1 third is the same thing as 2 thirds. That should make sense to you. So what we're going to do here is we're going to basically undo a powers to powers rule here. We're going to rewrite this as 27 to the power of 1 third, all raised to the power of 2. Essentially, we're doing the powers to powers rule backwards here. Because we know that we would multiply the two powers, we would multiply 1 third times 2, and we would write it as 2 thirds. But notice here that when I've rewritten it in this way, there's a piece that I know how to solve. This part right here, this 27 to the power of 1 third, is something that I already know how to simplify. So if I can rewrite it in this way, I can at least evaluate a portion of my expression. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to focus on this fractional exponent right here that I can turn into a root. And I know that this is really the third root of 27. And I then know, okay, the third root of 27 is 3. So by rewriting it in this way, I've been able to simplify that whole portion. And then I'm left with this. I'm left with 3 to the power of 2. Which, while when I first started this problem, I thought this was going to be impossible, I now, because I evaluated the little piece that I knew, have 3 to the power of 2, which is... 9. And that's my final answer. So if we can rewrite all of these fractional exponents using this powers to powers property in reverse, we'll actually be able to evaluate all of these different fractional exponent expressions. So now I'm going to look at this second problem here, and I'm going to rewrite this one in the same way. I know that 1 fourth times 3 gives me 3 fourths. So I'm going to rewrite this as 1296 to the power of 1 fourth, all raised to the power of 3. So I've just undone the powers to powers rule in reverse. And then I'm going to focus on this piece here. So I'm going to rewrite that fractional exponent with a numerator of 1 into a root. So I have the fourth root of 1296, all raised to the power of 3. Then if I utilize my powers resource, I realize that 6 to the power of 4 gives me 1296. So this portion here becomes just 6. And then I have 6 to the power of 3, which I can evaluate, or I can look at my powers resource, and I know that 6 to the power of 3 is 216. So now let's try out these examples. If we look at example A, I notice that I have 729 to the power of 4 sixths. So I'm going to start off here by rewriting this to be 729, and I'm going to write it as to the power of 1 sixth, all then raised to the power of 4. So remember, we're doing the powers to powers rule in reverse. Then from here, I rewrite that as a root. So I have, okay, 729, the sixth root of 729. So what to the power of 6 gives me 729? Well, I know that that is 3, so I now have 3 to the power of 4, which is 81. 
And then I move on here to part B. And I notice, okay, these all have powers of 1. So that's going to be negative 8 inside parentheses to the power of 2 thirds. Then from here I have 125 to the power of 2 thirds. Now both of these can be rewritten as 1 third times 2. So I'm going to take both of these and it's going to be, okay, negative 8 to the power of 1 third all raised to the power of 2. And then I have 125 to the power of 1 third all raised to the power of 2. So if I come back down here, I now can rewrite these powers of 1 third as roots. So I have the third root of negative 8 on the inside, all raised to the power of 2. The third root of 125, all raised to the power of 2. Well, the third root of negative 8, it's because it's an odd root. I know that that is, in fact, negative 2 raised to the power of 2. Over the third root of 125 is 5 raised to the power of 2. I then take negative 2 squared, which is negative 2 times negative 2, which is 4. 5 squared, which is 25. Then from here, I look at example C. So here I see, okay, I have 3 over 2, so I can rewrite that as 1 half times 3. So this becomes 49 to the power of 1 half, all raised to the power of 3. I rewrite this as a root, so it's the square root of 49 raised to the power of 3. Well, the square root of 49 is 7. So we have 7 raised to the power of 3. I then can utilize my powers resource, and I find 343. And then my final example here, we have 16 over 81 to the power of 3 fourths. So I start with 16 to the power of 3 fourths over 81 to the power of 3 fourths. I then can rewrite these as 1 fourth times 3 using my powers to powers. So I have 16 to the power of 1 fourth all raised to the third over 81 to the power of 1 fourth all raised to the third which that's the fourth root of 16 raised to the third over the fourth root of 81 raised to the third fourth root of 16 is 2 fourth root of 81 is 3 and then I take each of those to the power of 3 so we get 8 over 27. So now that we've mastered fractional exponents with a numerator other than 1, we're now going to tie these together with negative exponents. So here to start, you'll notice in part A, we have 3,125 to the power of negative 4 fifths. And our first step here is to still rewrite this with positive exponents. So I'm going to move my 3,125 to the power of negative 4 fifths to its reciprocal, which means I'm going to move it to the denominator so that it has a positive exponent. And then from here, I'm going to still rewrite this so I know that 1 fifth times 4 would allow me to have a fractional exponent with 1 in the numerator. So here I then have 1 over... 3,125 to the power of 1 fifth, all raised to the fourth. I can then rewrite that as a root, so I have the fifth root of 3,125, all then raised to the fourth. Well, the fifth root of that is 5, so I then have 5 raised to the fourth, so my final result is 1 over 5 to the power of 4, which is 625. So 1 over 625. Now if we look at example B, we notice that we have a fraction with a fractional exponent. So we're going to start by using that powers to powers rule. So we have 256 to the power of negative 3 fourths 
over 2,401 to the power of negative 3 fourths. Then from here, we want to rewrite this with positive exponents, so we're going to move everything with a negative exponent to the opposite side of the fraction. So we have 2,401 to the power of a positive 3 fourths over 256 to the power of a positive 3 fourths. Now we need to think about how I'm going to rewrite this, and I'm going to rewrite it with 1 fourth times 3. So this becomes 2401 to the power of 1 fourth, all raised to the third. Then we have 256 to the power of 1 fourth, all raised to the third. Rewriting those as roots, And then the second one. Now the fourth root of 2401 is 7. And the fourth root of 256 is 4. And then we take each of those to the power of 3, so we end up with 343 all divided by 64.